So we are done with our shooting. So we have got quite a lot of time lapses. Now let's look at how to post process these time lapses. So in the first time lapse, we are using a, the simplest setup. We are using After Effects and Adobe Camera Raw. So this time lapse does not have any parameter that is changing over time. So in this particular time lapse, the first time lapse that we shot, that is of the mist covering up the mountain. So we all the settings are constant in that there is no shutter speed is not changing, aperture is not changing. So ISO is not changing, everything is constant. So what we have to do is to correct one camera row file and apply that to the entire sequence. So that's what we are going to do. So I'm in After Effects, I'm importing the time lapse. So make sure that the camera row sequence is ticked. So this makes sure that the entire sequence is imported, no, not just one image. So import the entire sequence. So the camera row dialog box is open here. So now let's take it to where we want it. So first thing that I would like to do is to check with color the profiles, the camera profiles. So right now it is using the Adobe color, the default profile of Adobe camera row. So you have a different profiles of camera row profiles or you could even choose the profile that is there in your camera. So these are the modes or camera profiles that is available in your camera. So in this case, I am trying to use Adobe landscape. So there is a little difference between Adobe color, it's a little more punchier. So the landscape mode even in the camera is a little more punchier than the default uh, mode. So I'm using this profile. Then what I wanted to do next is dehaze the uh, image as it is a very misty foggy condition. Uh, so we, had, we wanted to remove whatever atmospheric haze what we had in this. So I'm just dehazing this a little. At the same time, I'm adding contrast that also helps me to dehaze or add a little more punch to the image or a little more contrast. Then I'm trying to pull my whites a little. So it's basically I'm able to control the highlights using whites and these highlights button. So I'm getting the whites in the range. So you could use the histogram. You could see that if the whites are getting clipped here, you could see that. So I'm just bringing down those whites. So it's all under control. A little more clarity. Clarity is basically a local contrast. In this case, I'm using uh, a GH5S and it does all the all the lens corrections inside the camera itself and I don't have to do it in the post production stage. And if you wanted, you could adjust the white balance. You could maybe use a preset mode to change your white balance. In this case, I'm just slightly removing the blue that is there. So the, the slider helps me to change the white balance. So I'm just changing the white balance here a little. So I'm just removing a blue a little. The original as shot had a little more blue. I'm just removing the blue. I don't want to go too much yellow also. So I'm removing a little blue from the time lapse. If you wanted to make it a little more dramatic, you could introduce a, a graduated filter, make these uh, place a little more uh, contrasty or so I'll just add a little more detail to this clouds and bring that those clouds a little down. So I have already adjusted, I'm just bringing down the highlights a little more. Exposure and maybe adding a little blue to the clouds. So I have a little more dramatic clouds. So anytime if you want to adjust that, you can come to graduate or filter and adjust this. If you want to clear it, you can clear it off. So what it introduces is a little more, you could do, you could make it maybe more yellow this part or maybe slightly bluish here. My idea is to bring a little more blue here and a little more vibrance and saturation. I think that's all uh, what I wanted to do in this time lapse. So I'll just click OK. So I have the corrected time lapse here in my project panel. Now what I have to do is I have to create a composition. So I'm creating a new composition. You could choose an Ultra HD composition. That's what I wanted in this case. And you could choose an Ultra HD with the desired frame rate. I'm choosing 24 here. And my current duration is around 12 seconds, the time lapse. So I'm just choosing a 12 second duration for the time lapse. And you could rename it. Okay, so I have this. 
composition ready now I just need to drag and drop my time lapse here. So, uh, this image is slightly bigger than uh, ultra HD composition. So, I am scaling it down to 97 I think a little more 96 this completely depends on the what resolution you wanted to output these time lapse to you could make it to a full HD or a 4K how whatever you wanted it is based on the resolution that the camera puts out this camera is actually a 10 megapixel camera it is mostly concentrated towards video and the resolution image resolution is very low but I find it very versatile to shoot time lapses one is it is smaller uh, size makes me uh, what mostly what my time lapses go into a 4K timeline and this is apt for that and it works fine for me. If you wanted to use it in 8K time lapses or if I wanted to have a bigger resolution I would shoot my A7R2 so that gives me a 42 megapixel that is almost 8K I will be able to even zoom and use it as a different two time lapses or even have a digital motion in the time lapse. But in this case I am happy with the 10 megapixel or most of the cases I am happy with the time lapses that I get from GH5S. So now I have to render this time lapse it is normal I let me export this time I have already exported this time lapse uh, and I have the render time lapse. Let me show you the render time lapse. So, in this time lapse, the settings what I have used is slightly different. So, it is, has a slightly different white balance, but I think otherwise it is all the same. Um, so, what is one more thing that I want to talk about showing this time lapse? I am playing back this time lapse. There is a small spec or a sensor dust in this time lapse. Uh, so, which mostly caused when you are shooting a time lapse in a higher aperture value, there is a good chance that uh, there can be sensor dust that is seen in the time lapses. This is a serious pain for time lapse photographers. Most of the cases when we are shooting, especially with Sony cameras, you have lot of sensor dust. In mirrorless cameras, the sensors are exposed and there is no mirror in front of the sensor to protect the sensor from dust and particles. So, when you change the lenses or when you are outdoor conditions even if the camera is weather sealed there are good chances that you have lot of sensor dust. So, this uh, this gets worse when you are ex exposing in a higher aperture or aperture value above 5 or 8. When you are shooting something in an aperture value or f number above 8 you could start seeing these um, start seeing these sensor dust. When in very low aperture values like f 2.8 mostly these sensor desks are not visible. So, what you can do is always keep your sensors clean, get the sensors cleaned uh, every once in a while or use an ND filter so that you could control your aperture and always keep your aperture in a lower value based on that based to control the exposure what you can do is you can add an ND and keep the aperture values low. So, I will just show you how to remove the sensor desk in After Effects. So, you could see that there is a spec here. So, uh, which which is a sensor desk and uh, it is visible throughout the time lapse. So, what I am trying to do is I am trying to use After Effects clone tool to remove the sensor desk. So, I am going to After Effects I will clear this compositions and import the output video which I have. So, and I will create a new composition based on this video and let me go to the last frame and see the sensor test. It is very minor and I think it can be easily removed. So, go to the layer mode to go to the layer mode double click on the on the sequence on the composition. So, I have this spec. So, I will go to the clone tool and adjust the brush size something that suits this then go to paint mode I am choosing a constant here and going to pick up a point and paint on the top of it. So, this kind of gone, but it is only affected in one particular frame because in the other frames it is there in the last frame it is not there. So, what I am going to do is I am going to go into the timeline and open the paint and I could see here I have the clone. 
So, I am just extending the clone throughout the sequence, so that I have this clone effect throughout the composition not only on the last frame. So, I will go back to the composition mode to see the effect. So, I can I will just drag back. So, you could see the clone it is covered throughout the sequence and I have no sensor test. So, in this case it was very easy and straightforward many cases it is very difficult. So, the best way is to try to avoid sensor dust as much as possible, but in many cases it is unavoidable and in that case we might have to work in after effects to get the results. Now, I will show you the final sequence after removing the sensor dust and doing the color correction and all those things. Let me show you the final result. Mm -hmm.